Thank you for watching our video. Please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you. In 1934, the Australian Ford Coupe Utility was born of a farm wife's protest that there was no vehicle suitable for doing work around the family homestead that could also ferry herself and her husband to church. It thus kicked off a fascination with car, truck hybrids that persists to the present day, even if today's hybrids seem to have grown the wrong way round. For decades, the formula was simply a sedan-based light pickup, pioneered in the United States by the Ford Ranchero in 1957. Chevrolet countered in 1959 with a El Camino, having tested the market's waters with the truck-based, fiberglass and steel-bedded Cameo in 1955. Today, of course, everybody from down-home ram to highfalutin Lamborghini sells a gussied-up truck-like object of some sort, but the scales have tipped in favor of lifted wagons and leather-trimmed behemoths in the half-ton and up classes. In the mid-1970s, the classiest option available from a factory was GMC's El Camino clone, the Sprint but the well-heeled sort of folks who thought Nudicone's idea of vehicle customization was an entirely off-base had to turn to small-batch private enterprise to feed their need for legitimate luxury and pickup form. One contender came from traditional coach works, a concern based in Chatsworth, California, that once employed famed customizer Gene Winfield. It's Mirage, a Coupe de Ville-based pickup, wasn't the only customized caddy to emerge from the shop. Traditional also built a Deville-based wagon called the Mirage Sports Wagon and a Fleetwood Long Roof called the Castilian Fleetwood Estate Wagon, the latter combining the then hot trend of Iberian-themed American luxury, see, Cordoba, Chrysler, with the preferred British nomenclature for this five-door, sedan-based family hauler. To punctuate it, of course, they appended the good old American term wagon to the end, just in case you weren't sure what you were getting into. In retrospect, we figure the name is no worse than gibberish like Buick Dirks, and it's certainly less of a mouthful than BMW individual M760 Lee X-Drive model V12 excellence the next 100 years. Between 1975 and 1976, Traditional turned out a couple hundred mirages. Although Traditional Coachworks wasn't endorsed by General Motors, the vehicles were sold via regular Cadillac dealerships. Nobody seems to be quite sure how many were constructed, although numbers quoted on the internet range as high as 240. Why so few, given America's fascination with pickups, and during the 1970s, at least, vehicles that seemed tailor-made to carry steer horn hood ornaments. For one, they were spendy. A customer would find himself soaked for double the price of a new coupe de ville. But the select few American visionaries like Evel Knievel who purchased Traditional's first Mirage, obviously didn't care. Of course, the Mirage wasn't the only Cadillac-based truck, car of the era. There was the Caribou, built by another California outfit that changed its name to reflect its marquee model. The Caribou, which actually predates the Mirage by a couple of years, was also based on the Deville, but it didn't feature the Mirage's bachelor elegant flying buttresses behind the cab. Pixies fans may get off on its decidedly awkward take on the shape, however. Interestingly, in the pre-war era of coach building, Coupe de Ville denoted a body with an open driver compartment and an enclosed cabin for passengers. In our February 1977 issue, the late Leon Mando flipped this conceit on its head, advertising free rides around Greater Los Angeles in a new Cadillac and chauffeur. The Cadillac, of course, was a mirage, and passengers were expected to ride in the bed, a manner of carriage legal in California at the time. The saga could well have ended with Mandel's arrest, due to a series of complications arising from an act of public pantomime that involved an avid CD reader and the theft of the luxury truck, car. Not long after this Mandel-led journey to the heart of darkness, traditional coach works ceased operations. A quarter of a century later, the Mirage made an appearance in CD's own John Phillips's side-splitting takedown of the 2002 Cadillac Escalade extension in a Facebook comment referencing that story. Current Cadillac honcho Johan Denison responded, You are no doubt aware that people keep asking us to build another EXT. 
I think not. But that's just me. What then, Johan, about building us a CTS-based truck, car? The people, obviously, have been clamoring for a Cadillac car-based pickup longer than they've known they wanted a CAD equipped with a Majate. Tradition, we say, wins out. Heck, throw in that fancy 627 pound to foot twin turbo V8 you just announced. Only a curmudgeonly coal roller could argue with that dwarf figure. Let the Germans have their back assured notion of a coupe utility, and build us a strapping Cadamino that zigs dot until that day arrives, one lucky sap can fill the gaping hole in his heart with the 1976 Mirage seen in these photos, as it's available for sale at Bring a Trailer as of this writing. This particular machine was owned by the late head of the Mirage registry and has been fully redone. The resto job included a red to silver color change, and the Mirage features a few non-standard parts, like a steering wheel that it'd be more at home in a billet clad deuce roadster from the 1990s, but it presents well, and according to the seller, the warmed over 512 cubic inch engine should make about 600 pounds to foot of torque. In short, buy this, roll a star-spangled XR750 into the bed, and go be evil. Thank you for watching our video, please give us a big like, subscribe to our channel for new videos every day with amazing cars. Leave us your opinion in the comment section on the video. Thank you.